I see a lot of familiar faces, but how many of you are running cPanel on your servers at home and are already doing some integration work? Show of hands. Oh, what was that? Oh, okay. And how many, is, or is anyone interested, they have a product that they want to integrate into cPanel? Same, same, oh, over here, okay. Very good. Um, so my name is TJ Dankliffs. I am a product owner at cPanel, and my area of focus is the integration experience. And so uh, the team rubber duck that I have the um, fortune of working with is working on the APIs and the hooks and all the things that you can do to work with cPanel to make it custom for your needs. Uh, I was also curious, how many of you have been in the web hosting industry for, say, more than five years? Quite a few, what about 10? 20? 30? Okay, okay. So I have a confession to make. I've only been in the web hosting industry for one year. Uh, I started my career all in, um, out in oil and gas, which I'm not quite sure why. I left college with a degree in technology and project management. Uh, but I went there and I did some, some C-sharp programming and made some simulations, later became a project manager, and later began to lead the team of project managers there. Um, coming over to cPanel and the hosting industry in general, what I've really come to appreciate is everyone's desire to continue to learn and their desire to continue to share what they've learned. And so I'd like to do that today by sharing with you what I've learned in my one year here with cPanel uh, about our hooks and our integration systems. Uh, the Rubber Duck team, our mission is to provide customers and extension developers with intuitive and powerful integration capabilities. We're defining an extension as an outside product that wants to integrate into cPanel. Uh, there could be a commercial type av availability there, or it could just be a free offering. And um, I was curious as well, how many of you in the audience are developers as a trade? Show of hands. Okay. What are some of your preferred programming languages? Just shout them out. PHP? Sorry, what was that? Ruby and Go, okay. Jan? <laughs> okay. We'll think there's one in the back. Ruby, okay. Interesting. This is all important information for me as we continue to like, kind of outline our roadmap for the integration systems and the supporting languages that we want to provide. Uh, today, I am going to start with a very, very basic approach to everything you need to know to be able to use some of these systems within cPanel. We're going to talk about what an API is to kind of just set a broad playing field here. We're going to look at cPanel and WHM as a product and how that API functions. And then we're going to move into some custom code examples and how you can authenticate your custom code. And finally, moving into automation with standardized hooks. So getting into some of the real basic stuff, and we'll move right through it. But this is kind of how I like to break down what an API is. It's a communication between a presentation layer on the front end, that's what your users are going to see, and a back end layer that's going to house the core functionality of your product. And it's going to be relaying both requests and returning information based on what you are requesting to the end users. What's also important to remember is your front end can be in multiple locations. Uh, like you think of your, your social media applications, you have a web browser, Twitter version, you have a web browser, or sorry, a mobile app for Twitter. The same can be said for a front end of any API that's using it. You can make sure that your core functionality remains consistent while you customize how the user interfaces with the product. Uh, a very basic example that I like to start with is thinking of yourself at a restaurant. Say maybe you're in Atlanta at a conference and you really want to get some chicken and waffles because they're kind of known for that. This is a good example of users interfacing with a front end. Uh, in this example, the API would be the waiter who's going to relay your order to the back end, which would be the kitchen. And it could look something like this in regards to what an HTTP request would look like. We're going to have a function for placing an order. We're going to have some parameters and some other values. Um, so on the menu, maybe they don't have chicken and waffles, but you're going to get creative, and you're going to request waffles and add fried chicken. And in the best case, that's going to be received by the kitchen. The chef will prepare the order, and everyone's happy. But not always the case, right? Sometimes you get a very particular chef or a very particular back end that likes to spew information that you might not be able to understand. So it's also very important to us that the API provide some type of meaningful response that a user can understand that can then be shown to that user-facing front end. And so, sorry, we don't serve chicken for breakfast. You probably should find a different restaurant if you're in Atlanta. 
so moving on to cPanel and WHM, our product, if you're not familiar with it, is a basic, if you're thinking of it in the very simple terms, we have one license for one server, the server runs the software, and you have the WHM interface that your root user is going to operate out of, and you're gonna create many cPanel users and cPanel accounts. On occasion, we have what's called a reseller, which can be anywhere and privileges on the gamut of a root user to a basic cPanel user, depending on the access control that you grant it. And this is important when we talk about APIs, because in cPanel and WHM, we have an API system for each one, and each of those is gonna be limited by the privileges that that user has to operate in. A few examples of what the interfaces look like now. This is cPanel, and that's where your users are gonna manage their websites, their databases, their email, um, and then you have WHM. This is where the root user will be creating those accounts to power the cPanel side, as well as managing the server, the MySQL uh, versions, the security, and everything else. So when we talk about this breakdown, we're looking at these, are, these as the features, and you can see that they're very different areas of responsibility. And we look at the APIs, we see that we currently have them segmented by cPanel user or a root user or, or perhaps a reseller that has some of the root access privileges. Any questions so far? All right, so if you stood in um, Ken's talk earlier about our roadmap, you heard some talk about UAPI and WHM API. There are deprecated versions right now that still exist in the product. These are the two that are supported that we wanna move forward on. And so if you're writing a new integration, it's very important that you try to, your best to use these. And if you can't find a functionality that you need out of these, you should let me know, because I'd love to hear it. Uh, that's part of my role here, is I wanna make sure that anyone trying to develop into cPanel and WHM has the support and the tools they need to do so. If you've never seen one of our APIs, uh, we can look at an example here real quick. This is the WHM API 1 for creating an account. Uh, and also the create account page. In most cases of WHM, you'll find some correlation between the actual page and the interface and the API. Uh, and in this case, the API has a ton of parameters, but our, what is only required is the domain and the username. And if we take an example here, um, I think another really cool thing to mention is that our APIs can be run over command line on the server. And so you can, just like you would break it down with parameters in a general HTTP request, you can also test that out on the command line, and it gives you a really good idea of what's gonna be returned and kind of what the API is going to expect. So as I mentioned, we have root access for a WHM API that's required, and we also have specific requirements within the parameters, and in this example, it's requiring that the domain have a TLD. If we were to remove that, you would receive an error uh, that would look something like this. Uh, the important values here are of course your reason, that's kind of what we were mentioning earlier, a real understandable reason as to why something failed. The result, that's a Boolean, so zero means failure, one means good, and then the version is referring to WHM API 1. Um, and as we get into further, further versions, um, the version control will actually be a little bit more important. But right now, because we only have one supported version in WHM API and one in UAPI, uh, it's a little bit more consistent. So if we look at that same example and we move through and provide the correct parameters, we'll see some input. You see that result is now changed to one. You've rendered success and it's gonna output in this case a lot of raw data based on all that user accounts configuration settings. Moving on to UAPI, um, what's really cool about UAPI is every bit of the cPanel interface is gonna be powered by UAPI very soon. We have some of those deprecated ones still used on some pages. Um, but very soon, anything in the UA, or sorry, anything in the cPanel interface will be used uh, using UAPI. This is an example of the MySQL database page, which you can perform a bunch of different actions. And we'll show you here some examples too of what that looks in command. And so, cPanel user in this case, using the MySQL create database, creating a database called example user underscore database one, and getting a successful message. Right. Um, we can also list databases. Let's say we created two get the output, and this is what is expected. Now, what's really kind of important is when we look at this segmentation of privileges and responsibilities, we need to, as root users, be able to call cPanel UAPI on behalf of the user. And that concept is called masquerading. So making a call on behalf of that user 
in order to do things for that user is a very common task that we find people doing, such as an account is created, and I need to create a database and register a user under that database for that cPanel user, as an example. And in order to test this, it's very similar as well. You'll just run uh, an additional parameter called user, putting in your cPanel user, and it will let you run it as root with similar results. So why is this helpful over command line? I've already mentioned it's kind of good for testing. Uh, you can do some low-level automation, though, as well. Here's an example. You could write a bash script, very basic here, that accepts inputs for a user in the domain, and then will generate an account, a database, database user, and assign that database user privileges to the database. Uh, this example also outputs then the list of databases that we've created. So if you were to run this, and say we put all of the first three UAPI outputs into just dev null, which means they won't show up over a terminal, you would get a result such as this, where your user has been created, your database has been created with it, and that user has been assigned to the database. Any questions so far? Has a lot of y'all already used the command line functionality of our UAPI? Show of hands? Okay. Good. This is just kind of getting into the, the meat of the stuff here. So next up, custom code and API authentication. We said we had some PHP example or developers, um, Ruby. What we like to basically uh, talk about today is some different ways for both on a server, you know, as a local user or remotely authenticating um, the API token system. So that's what we're going to get into with the authentication here. Um, so a quick look at the create account HTTP request. If this was a remote request, it would look something like this. We do use what's called JSON API in our systems to return a JSON output uh, to the requester. Uh, sometimes your, your parameters can be pretty lengthy. As I mentioned, this create account one earlier has I don't know, roughly probably 10, 15, because there's so much customization to go into account creation. Uh, for the sake of simplicity and slide space, I'm going to use list accounts, which doesn't require any parameters. So let's look at a basic HTTP request using PHP. We want to define ourselves a root user, because we are going to do a list accounts, which requires either reseller privileges as, a, as the ability, with the ability to create an account or a root user. We're going to need an API token, which is a newer system that we have, and then we're going to need to make the query to pull the API. So to get an API token, there's the API token interface in WHM. Uh, it's very simple to use. Has anyone, has everyone used this? Any show of hands? A few? Okay. Um, what's very important to mention is I have a token called my root token. You don't ever really want to do that. Uh, that's granting privileges to, to a token to basically do anything on your server. So it's really important that on live servers you make sure you limit your token's privileges here. But if you click the generate token button, you can then customize and set up your token. We're going to call this one just list accounts because that's all it's going to be able to do. Uh, you can set an expiration date, but we're going to keep it open. And all we're going to give it access to do is uh, list accounts. That's it. So make sure you limit your privileges to just the scope of what you want to do within the code and make it a, a token for each instance that you want to do some customization. All right, so you're going to get this long string. Make sure you save it, because it won't ever show up again. Uh, you take it, and we can put it into that variable of our token at the top, and we can move on with our HTTP request. Um, one, two, if, it, if you're not familiar, 127.0.0.1 means you're on a local machine. Uh, obviously, if you were making a remote request, you would want to be able to put in the IP address for the destination. Um, if you're unfamiliar with PHP, what we're basically doing is we're preparing a, a header request. In this case, because we're local, we're not going to verify the SSL because it shouldn't really leave the machine. But in the case that you are making remote connections, of course, and you have certifications, you want to verify those first. We're going to pass in our user and our token into the header. And then we're going to make the header request. Uh, and of course, we want to make sure we have proper error handling for that header request, because sometimes things can get lost. Sometimes one end is working and one end's not. Uh, so it's important to make sure you have some error handling there. 
Uh, the same can be done and said for Perl. This is a very same example doing the exact same thing. Um, it's a little backwards in how we do it. We have to use an, H, uh, an HTTP tiny module, and that's going to let us prep the header and then perform the request. And as you can see at the bottom, we also have the error handling once it's made. Uh, we talked a little bit about languages at the very beginning, and you're going to see a lot pop up on here. You can really use anything supported in the Linux environment to make a cPanel and WHM extension or integration. Um, but of course, the further you get away from some of these more standard ones, the more creative you'll have to be. Uh, does anyone here know what language cPanel and WHM is programmed in? Perl. Yeah, so, and <laughs> Yes, Perl is actually our recommended method to use it. I know that's not everyone's favorite, but what it allows you to do is use some of the internal API modules that we use to serve those HTTP requests and actually just condense the amount of code and actually make some calls a little bit faster if you're on the local machine. Uh, one thing as a disclaimer to be said about you know, using internal modules is you want to make sure you have your proper unit tests because those modules are subject to change, as are the APIs, though. And you always want to make sure that your tests are happening on a dev environment on an edge build before it actually would make it to your live. So we can look at the, sim the same request as earlier. This is over HTTP TTP on a local machine, again. And if we use the internal modules, we can see we cut out quite a few lines of code. Uh, basically, in this case, because we're making a WHM API call, we're using a module called WHOST Manager API 1 Accounts. That is the module that houses the accounts APIs. And we're simply making a request with no arguments because we didn't want to include any parameters here. And we're printing out those results. And that's going to give you the same results as this, but you don't have to worry about the HTTP handling for a local machine. Any questions so far? Am I going a little fast? OK. So. We've talked about how you can manually do some scripts and some processes to help maybe combine some functionality on your server using the APIs. The next item on the list is talking about automation. We can take this and put it into what's called a standardized hook. And standardized hook, so the, a lot of different systems have a lot of different hooking mechanisms and event handlers. Uh, for cPanel and WHM, it's very straightforward. We have what's called a hook. We have an event that is going to act upon the hook and trigger the hook. And then we have actions that happen after that. Uh, so for cPanel and WHM, we have these items called hookable events. And this is your list of what you can use to trigger those actions. And for cPanel, it's all UAPI functions. And do you remember what I said earlier about UAPI and the cPanel interface? Anyone? Everything in the cPanel interface? is powered by UAPI. So anything your users are doing in the cPanel interface is a hookable event that you can use to then trigger some action code. In WHM, it's a little bit more limiting, but it's still a long list. Uh, we've built out kind of over time different uh, implementations and added features. Uh, so anything having to do with account creation, deletion, or management, uh, installing or changing an SSL, anytime your system updates, uh, and any time your system backups, or you can actually even add it with custom code. Uh, there's a full list in our documentation if you wanted to see more. So how do I find my hookable events on my server? If I don't want to look at documentation, or maybe I am familiar with a functionality that is occurring, but I can't quite find the right hook name for it. In tweak settings, if you're familiar with that, in WHM, there is a setting called debug mode, and it has three options, each one giving more verbose information as you use it. And for the sake of a development environment where you're going to do you know, some testing for custom code, you might as well go with option three. It's going to spew out all the information related to the event as well as any hooks tied to it. And so an example of that output looks something like this. If I wanted to perform an ad forwarder to an email account using a UAPI call or acting in the interface, I'll receive both a breakdown of hooked potentially hooked events for a pre or post action. And with UAPI, what's important to remember is if the call were to fail, or if parameters are provided that are invalid, a post action would not take place. 
but a pre-action would. So if you're wanting to, in this case, detect people adding folders, maybe you have a user who thinks someone is somehow getting access to their, their server, or sorry, their account, and using the API to add forwarders to their email, you could use this and I would set it up as a pre because you're wanting to detect attempts. If you're only wanting to detect successes, then posts would probably be fine and you'll get the information from that request. If we look at an example of the actual code to support a hook in Perl, it's kind of broken down in this way. We have what's called the describe method and that is you describing to the server what event you want to hook and what you want to do afterwards. So in this case, we have a category of cPanel. That's just the, the broader level. And then we're hooking off the UAPI event add forwarder. And the hook action is to call the subroutine addition, which will perform you know, whatever you want it to do. In this case, there wasn't enough room on the slide really to do anything meaningful. Uh, but what is important is that my context data, that is outputting in context the name of the hook and the event, and then data, all of the data passed through that hook. So in this case, if we look, um, or sorry, we'll get to an example here in a second, but if we look at add forwarder, any information that was passed by that UAPI call, even if it's incorrect parameters, or if someone's trying to spam the system, it would show up in the data field here. Another question that's been asked kind of recently is, can I hook multiple events within one uh, hook? And that's correct, you can. All you need to do is, um, sorry, let's see, there we go, got stuck a little bit. Uh, you just add a, a separate hooking event under the describe method, you explain to it what you want it to do. In this case, we're using different subroutines, but in, in any case, you could do the same. Uh, and you can perform those different actions within that same hook. Um, another thing important before, as you're writing the hook is to make sure that you register the hook. And that's using the manage uh, hooks utility. This is done under, over command line and uh, we'll just add it as a detect forwarder change here and you'll get these results. And then you can actually look in WHM in the manage hooks interface. It's under developer or development and you can see the hooks that you have registered as well as uh, the actions you expect them to take. And what's also really cool about this interface is you can, for testing, disable them, um, make a few tweaks on how they actually work, or delete them. Uh, it's kind of a, just a way to manage your hooks that you have on your server. But let's get back to the add forwarder hook. Uh, so we have debug mode still on. We kind of remember what it provided before. Now, with it established as a hook, uh, it's gonna return something like this. <clears throat> It, again, it is a pre-stage hook, so the information along the bottom, uh, in this example, this was all the information passed to the API, and this is all things that within your code you can interact with, you can validate, you can use logic to determine your next path forward. Um, this is pretty, pretty powerful information when you're trying to kind of tail what's happening and who's using APIs and how they're using them, and if they're being successful. From the same request, we can also see delete forwarder, if I were to delete the same folder I just added in the previous example, uh, you'd see the kind of different information provided here. All right. So if we go back to this bash example, um, again, this is pass it a username and a domain, and we want to create an account, create a database for that account, create a user for the database, and assign that database user privileges, admin privileges to that database. We can also do this with a hook, of course, and we don't have to worry where, where the create account comes from. It can be from a different integration, it could be from the WHM interface, it could be over a command line using the create account API. If we create a hook, um, it's gonna look something like this before we actually implement it. This is what the debug hooks will return if you're using the create accounts functionality anywhere. Uh, and then if you're starting actually to create a hook, and again, we're gonna provide some examples here where we're using internal Perl modules. We're using cPanel API1 utils execute, which allows the execution of UAPI functions within local code. So our hook is hooking into accounts create. We're doing it as a post because we definitely don't want to try to create databases on an account that doesn't exist. And then we're going to call the post create subroutine here at the bottom to execute our functionality. Um, 
before we get to post create, let's look at some of the supporting modules we'll want to have. We're going to want to be able to create the database, and this is what um, executing externally as a user from a root privilege would look like. We're passing it the same user that the hook passed to us when we created the account. Uh, and then we're calling the command create database under the MySQL UAPI module. And we can do the same for creating the user. It's a very simple layout. And the same for assigning all privileges for that user to the database. Uh, lastly, because we want to make sure that our user actually gets the information regarding their database setup, we're going to have a, a last subroutine called email user, which will use that cPanel email send module. And you can notify the user of all the information you just generated for them. All right, so looking at it completely, that's what we have in post create, and this is where all those subroutines get called. Uh, I can walk you through it really quick, but it's, it's fairly straightforward. We take from the data the user, and that's getting passed, and we take the user and generate basically all the other areas of UAPI that are needed, uh, the database, the name of the database, and the database username, and we end up getting uh, a successful database created. Uh, this is what the contact email portion would look like. If you wanted to implement that, it's actually using from the data the contact email that's added when the create account is used. So if you're using create account, one of the parameters is you can add a contact email for that user. <clears throat> and then we can utilize that to, to notify them uh, and really have our way as, as root users that we would want to. All right, do we have any questions so far on this hook example? Okay. Um, kind of went a little fast, but that's, that is the talk. Um, any questions about anything we've talked about so far? Any feedback on our API or hook systems that you have? Okay. Uh, if you are interested in what's called a commercial extension, which means uh, you are an external product that wants to get involved with cPanel, I'd recommend you talk to either of these guys here at the conference. Uh, Chip's the product owner for Marketplace and Mario is business development. And if you have any questions or need to find any information regarding our integration systems, the best places to look are our SDK online or our WHM, uh, cPanel and WHM forums. We also have a Discord channel that's uh, monitored by myself and parts of my team. And, and then you can contact me directly if you'd like to over email as well. Um, and also, please leave feedback for this talk. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anybody, last minute questions, anything? All right, go ahead, please, come on. As far as changes uh, to the cPanel API system, mm -hmm. uh, you, you said that it was important to test everything uh, in a uh, non-production environment. Are there any guarantees that you have that the API in this uh, in current cPanel will not change significantly in future releases, and where can we find like a change log for yeah. the API? So we try our best to avoid any changes to an API once it's created, unless it's maybe adding additional parameters that aren't required that would just give more functionality and not break or take away any type of functionality. Uh, it's kind of the reason we have so many APIs right now is because instead of changing ones, we would add a new layer on top. And what we want to do in the future is kind of standardize what we do have first and then properly version each of these APIs moving forward. And that would help reduce any type of change that would impact your integrations. Um, as we are going through a change right now with the API 1 in cPanel, as Ken mentioned earlier, if you didn't catch that, uh, it's been deprecated for fi uh, about five years. And with UAPI being completely over cPanel and having that same functionality, we plan to eventually remove it in version 88. But this is kind of the, the path I want to take forward for all these types of um, iterations, so to, say, so to speak. I want to make sure that you have something in your hands before we take anything away. That's important to us, too. Thank you for the question, though. Any other questions? Well, thank you very much, TJ. Appreciate your time. Thank you, everyone. One, one more thank time. You.